the very first thing you want to do is actually duplicate your footage. So, now that your footage is duplicated, highlight the top layer and go up here to this tool that looks like a paintbrush. This is the Roto Brush tool. Now with this selected, we can double click on our footage, which brings it up here in a new window. And now the easiest way to select your subject is just to click and drag to paint over the areas that you want to include. Here in this view, a new menu pops up here, and we can select which version of Roto Brush we want to use. I'm going to make sure that version 3 is selected. Now, as far as your mask itself is concerned, it's not going to be perfect, so keep highlighting the areas that you want to include until it gets it. But it's probably going to overcorrect a little bit and include some things that you don't want it to. So to remove a section, hold Alt or Option to turn it red, and you can remove things that you don't want to include. Another little tip is that if you hold Ctrl or CMD and then click and drag your mouse either up or down, you can change the size of your brush to make either larger or smaller detail changes. You can also adjust the brush size from this menu over here. Now the final thing that you should be aware of is that if you've got a subject with a lot of hair or other areas of high detail, that's where you're going to want to bring in the Refine Edge tool. So go back up to the Roto Brush icon, and then click and hold down until this larger menu appears, and you can select it from here. And with this tool, you simply want to go over all the troublesome areas that require a little extra TLC, and boom, there you go. It's like magic. This section will appear differently showing black areas that are not included, while white areas are included. And it'll also show grayish areas for things that have a partial transparency. You can also change up the way that your selection is displayed to you with these buttons down here. Now once you have a selection that you're happy with, you can press play and watch it through to see how well it sticks. If you've ever used Rotobrush versions 1 or 2, then you should notice that 3 is going to be a lot faster and way more accurate. But if you do notice that it still starts to drift away from your subject, then go to the first frame where you see it drifting and make an adjustment to bring it back in line. This will help to teach it what you actually want it to include, and this is also a good time to say that you should probably have the basic pieces of your editing done. You can actually just jump into this other composition tab over here, and the effect will be taking place already. I'll just hide my bottom layer, and we can see exactly what the Rodo layer is doing, and we can already place things like our text or motion graphics between these two layers to see how this effect is working out. Now, if it's looking good, but it's not quite perfect, then you can try a couple different things. Like highlighting the rotor brush layer, and in effect controls, you should see a bunch of different options that you can influence. You can increase or decrease the feather, which basically just changes how sharp or soft the edge of your selection is. The contrast, or you can even shift the edge, basically keeping everything the same, but moving everything out or in in comparison to your subject. Then there's reduced chatter, and chatter looks like this, and is usually in areas of really high detail, where it's having trouble figuring out whether something is included or not. And it goes back and forth a lot of different times in that section. Decreasing the chatter will also increase the blur, so it's a bit of a trade-off, but it's still way less noticeable than the chatter itself. Then finally, you can choose whether or not to allow the selection to incorporate motion blur, which basically just means that the sections which are moving faster will appear softer when they're moving. A situation where this would come in handy is if your subject's arm is quickly moving, but the mask is super sharp like this, and it doesn't quite look right. Allowing motion blur to be incorporated is probably gonna make it a little bit more convincing. Then finally, you have some more detailed controls over that motion blur. You can increase the number of samples, which will basically just increase the quality of your result, but also will take more time to process. Shutter angle just controls how intense the blurring is. And then you have a general checkbox for higher quality, along with an option to decontaminate colors around the outermost part of your selection. But now that you have the rotor brush complete and you're happy with the results, make sure that you freeze it. The reason that you want to do this is because right now After Effects is more or less making all of these calculations on the fly. And even though it's rendering and saving some of that detail here, you can see by the green line, it's on a constant rotating buffer, and it's taking away system memory from your computer and more specifically other parts of your edit. 
Freezing your work lets After Effects save what you've done, while also freeing up more fast processing power for other parts of your edit. You just need to let it run through and do its thing, so go into coffee and then come back when it's done. And if you ever want to make changes to your Roto in the future, just unfreeze and there you go. Alright, thank you for watching and see you in another one.